As a kid, did you ever just pick up a game purely on a whim? Most of the time, it would be some jank shovelware, enticing you in with deceivingly good cover art or endorsements from publications you'd never heard of. Side note, any publishers who want a UDS quote on their game box, hit us up. But every now and then, you discover a real hidden gem. And that was my experience with The Darkness. Overlooked upon its release, this game has since become a cult classic for those in the know. And let me tell you, if you haven't experienced its darker lore yet, you're missing out on a genuinely underrated gem. So let's look at the story, the gameplay, and everything else to find out if it's still worth checking out in 2023. The Darkness is ostensibly a first-person shooter, but dig beneath the surface and it's so much more. It's a tale of love, loss, and unspeakable powers. You step into the shoes of Jackie Estacado, a mob hitman who inherits an ancient and malevolent force on his 21st birthday. And this titular darkness isn't just a plot point, it's the crux of the gameplay, influencing every decision and battle. While the supernatural elements might be what entices you in, it's the heart-rending relationship between Jackie and his girlfriend Jenny that will stick with you long after playing. The game deftly blends moments of vulnerability and tenderness amidst its violent backdrop, something not commonly found in FPS titles of the time. The first time the tendrils of the darkness writhed out of Jackie, coiling around enemies and eviscerating them with glee, let me tell you, my 15 year old edgelord brain got the biggest hit of serotonin since I tried my first Red Bull. Yeah! This was a power trip unlike anything I'd experienced, but it wasn't just all about this violent, visceral combat. The darkness enabled unique strategies, allowing you to take out lights, summon darklings to aid in combat, or even use Creeping Dark to send out a tendril to stealthily take out foes or access out of reach areas. In an era where open world experiences were just beginning to flourish on console, the darkness took a commendable step forward. Like I said, it's easy to categorize the game as merely a first person shooter with a supernatural twist, but that would be doing a disservice to its exploratory elements, easy for me to say, jeez. The game's interpretation of New York City might not be as vast as some of the sprawling open worlds we've come to know today, but just like a good burrito, it's dense, dripping with atmosphere, and meticulously crafted. The streets are alive, bustling with pedestrians, vehicles, and the general hum of urban life. It's a dark, rain-soaked metropolis that's both brooding and captivating. And nestled below these murky streets, one standout feature of this game's open-world mechanics is the subway system. Not just a mere backdrop, the subways act as a hub, connecting various parts of the city. You can genuinely board trains, plan your routes, and use them to navigate the concrete jungle above, giving you a real sense of immersion. While the central narrative is totally gripping, the darkness also offers various side quests and opportunities to interact with its inhabitants. From eavesdropping on overheard conversations that flesh out the lore to helping the distressed citizens of New York City, these interactions lend depth to the game. They make the world feel lived in, providing layers of backstory that might otherwise have been missed. I still remember trying random numbers in the subway payphone and getting this silly giddy rush when I accidentally stumbled across an audio easter egg. Now, The Darkness may have a linear story, but the game often gives players the freedom to choose how they approach objectives. Whether you utilize the shadows for a stealthy approach, go in guns blazing, or employ your supernatural powers creatively, the game adapts, making every player's experience unique. But the million dollar question is, is it still worth playing now? I mean, at this point, it'd be pretty weird if I said no, wouldn't it? Few games have captured the gritty ambiance of New York's underworld quite like The Darkness. The rain-soaked streets, the moody lighting, and the impeccably designed subway system immerse you in a world that genuinely feels lived in. And this is all augmented by Mike Patton's voiceover work as the titular Darkness, which is honestly nothing short of spine-chilling. No, 
The Faith No More frontman's whispered temptation and guttural screams lend a surreal quality to the game that elevates it above standard shooter affair. Among the sea of military shooters and space epics of its time, The Darkness stands apart with its story-driven approach, and it really is a testament to the art of video game storytelling. In my countless hours with The Darkness, the game consistently surprised me with its mix of poignant narrative beats and brutal combat sequences. It really pushed the boundaries of what was expected in a shooter, creating a game that was as thoughtful as it was thrilling. And it's a rarity in today's gaming scene to stumble upon something as singular and distinctive as The Darkness. It's a blend of horror, drama and action that deserves its place in the pantheon of gaming classics. So if you're looking to rekindle that sense of discovery, or simply in the mood for a game that offers something different from the norm, give The Darkness a go. It's an experience that remains unparalleled to this day. But have you played The Darkness before, or are you going to go and check it out now? Please let me know in the comments below, I would really love to read your thoughts. And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe for more videos on all things gaming, including a look at that one time Iron Maiden made a video game. Trust us, it's a thing that happened. But until then, my name is Tom, this has been UDS, and we'll see you next time.